some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello, and welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, it seems like that uh, Chili may have, well, stepped in way too much BS and crossed the line, finally. Because his most recent uh, live stream from uh, jail may have just, well, uh, proven way too much. And don't take my word for it. I'm just a layman when it comes to the law. Take it from this lawyer right here, who, uh, well, could probably build a case on uh, Chile de Castro right now. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy watching, well, this uh, real-life lawyer make a total fool out of Chilito. Let's talk about Chile's phone call. Let's just get right to it. I got the Nevada Revised Statutes. You know how I am. Well, dude, that comes from years of being... In a college setting where you have to prove your work. I mean, you just can't get by in a, a university setting without showing your citations. Otherwise, you would definitely uh, fail the class. Which is why a lot of these frauditors tend to fail at any bit of research. They have no experience in it. I think some of his call actually was a crime, but it'll be ultimately determined by a court. I think he could be indicted for what he did. You see, telling somebody to send uh, the, to all this stuff to the court is not petitioning. Petitioning has a, a very well-defined meaning. Recalling a judge, voter referendums, those are petitioning. Judge Zimmerman is out of the case because it was appealed. She doesn't have jurisdiction. That's with the appellate court, district court. Okay, uh, let me break it up down so we're chilly can understand it because you know he is a 28 year constitutional law scholar with really no credentials whatsoever so basically chile uh her job at one point was to be the judge over your trial but with that uh trial being over uh, and the appeals in the works uh yeah, it's out of her hands, basically. It's like a shift change at uh, Walmart with department managers where uh, one uh, particular uh, department manager goes home for the day and the next one comes along. Well, roughly that kind of analogy anyway. Not quite that way, but good enough to suffice to where maybe he'll understand. So when Chili tells you to send 100,000 petitions to Judge Zimmerman, he's sending it to the person who has the least amount of control over this case because she has no control over it. She already tried the case. She already made her decision. There's nothing that's going to be changed there. Wouldn't it make you wonder about how much he really understands about the court system when he's telling you to... In my book, this looks like targeting, okay? I'm told, I don't know, I'm told there's call flooding going down there, uh, that people are mailing a lot of shit to the courthouse. Listen, you're talking about a judge here, okay? And if the judge has the reactions that are within the statute, Chile could wind up getting indicted because Chile used a phone system and then broadcasted it through the internet as defined under the NRS. And you know what that does? It takes it from a simple misdemeanor with a six month penalty to one to five years of prison time. And for those people who want to send these petitions, which are not petitions, to the judge, and if she has a very bad reaction to it, they may just decide to tag the followers with aiding and abetting criminal liability and wind up giving them the same sentences. And then you could be in jail with him. Oh, OK. So not only is Chile uh, destroying himself, he's taking down his fan base with him. I don't think every one of them will go down. Uh, there'll be a few of them that will go down uh, to make examples of their stupidity. But if you want to be a bootlicker to Chile and ride the Titanic all the way down to the bottom of the Atlantic, well, be my guest. More power to you. There is nothing to be gained from this, and it is unlawful behavior in my book. It is outright criminal harassment. The, fel the federal cyber stalking statute, I got it here. Uh, this would fit it. You know, if she feels intimidated, if she feels threatened, if she feels uneasy, unsafe, 
you know, she could very well ask other grand jury to be impaneled and indict Chile on it. And then start tagging the people who did it. And believe me, you're not so anonymous on the Internet. I've dragged many people out from behind their keyboards right into a courtroom. If you know how to do it, you know how to do it. I would suggest that you don't do this. Let's watch the video. It says to do an act, any act, which is intended, has to be intent to substantially harm the person threatened, threats are one thing, or any other person with respect to his or her physical or mental health or safety. So now we get into a state of mind. What about the recipient of this? And the conjunction means at it. B, the person by words or conduct, that would be chilly, places the person receiving the threat in reasonable fear that the threat will be carried out. For the first offense, a misdemeanor. This is where things get a little bit dicey. A person who commits the crime of stalking, notice it's a criminal offense, with the use of an internet or network site, electronic mail, text messaging, or any other similar means of communication to publish, distribute information in a manner that substantially increases the risk of harm or violence to the person, is now liable under a Category C felony except is otherwise provided, which means despite what else it may say, a criminal penalty provided for in this section may be imposed in addition to any penalty that may be imposed for any other criminal offense. So this is not in lieu of, this is on top of. We violated there. Here's the website. It is an internet, I mean, super vague. Category C felony is for which a court shall sentence a convicted person to imprisonment at least a year, not more than five years years unless a greater fine is authorized blah 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 okay so here's the federal cyber stalking statute anyone with the intent willful it's an intent to harass intimidate or place under surveillance with the intent to injure harass or intimidate uses the mail oh isn't that what he said any interactive computer service that's defined by the federal wiretap act to include just about anything that's electronic Electronic communication servers, electronic communication of interstate commerce, certainly YouTube and everywhere else, engage in a course of conduct that causes, attempts to cause. Doesn't necessarily mean that it did. That's what I was telling you. They don't have to suffer from emotional distress or would reasonably expect it to cause substantial emotional distress. Shall be punished under this section, which is up to five years and $250,000. I gave you guys all the cases on that. Uh, so let's now take a look at the rest of this. And here we go. Here's the difference between the self-proclaimed law scholar, Chile de Castro, and this actual lawyer who uh, has uh, spent his life studying law. The difference being that uh, Chile really brings nothing to the table other than uh, quoting uh, John Locke and uh, Montesquieu and a few other uh, older philosophers well that is uh good to have that knowledge that is just basic stuff that you'll find in a uh well junior college to say the least i mean what uh, this lawyer is actually talking about is practical law knowledge that is established and used every day in modern society and he's giving it to you concisely and clearly, well, the best thing that Chile could come up with uh, was his uh, trifold. And, uh, well, that's been destroyed countless times already by those who don't even possess law degrees. This report is my verbal op-ed. Judge. See, by calling it op-ed, he's trying to act like it's a protected opinion. But opinions aren't protected. If you look at the Milkovich decision. Ann Zimmerman, this message is to you. Okay, this shows a fundamental misunderstanding of civil procedure and constitutional law. When the case is finished, she loses jurisdiction to even hear anything. You can't just plead for her to do this because there's no authority for her to be able to do this, or any judge. This isn't a political prisoner thing, and I think he's confused about that. Yeah, from what I've seen, Chile lacks focus and uh, seems to get confused quite easily. I mean, there's a lot of things just that just seem to fly why, way over his head. Please. The please. He's trying to think that it somehow mitigates against the possible implied threats here. Let's take a look. I've taken responsibility publicly and agreed with my family, friends, and colleagues. 
that my behavior in court was inappropriate. Inappropriate is an understatement. It's what we call a euphemism. <laughs> this reason, I say to Judge Ann Zimmerman now, release me from this jail. Okay, that goes against the rule of law because there isn't. If there was a way to release you, Chile, through the court system, well, you've already tried twice and you've lost both times. That was the rule of law. You're not asking for rule of law here. Exactly, dude. He's never been for the rule of law to begin with. He's always been for anarchy. He's an anarchist all the way to his core. Well, then, Judge Ann Zimmerman's principles are inconsistent and out of bounds. Okay, this could be considered a legitimate criticism in an op-ed piece. Uh, you know, those that run for public office, it's the Sam Yorty decision here in California. You better be ready to take a lot of slings and arrows, but there are limits to those slings and arrows. We have identified a dozen cases that went back to a bench trial. A bench trial means that Judge Zimmerman is the judge, jury, and executioner. Okay, when you say she's an executioner, you're kind of now starting to lose credibility. She's not an executioner, okay? She's the judge. And you, as a constitutional law scholar, waived your right to a jury trial, and you waived it, and you had a right to a trial by jury, and you waived it. You made the tactical decision to have the entire thing heard by one fact finder. You did that. He chose poorly. Yeah, Chile definitely chose poorly on so many fronts in this particular situation. And he's continuing to make these poor choices now. And it may end up costing him his freedom for several years. Man, oh man, didn't your mama ever tell you to shut up as a child? Because that's what you need to do now. Because, well, your mouth is writing che checks that your body can't cash. So far, we have three exact cases that are the same as my charges, the same NRS codes. In the past year, this judge has given these three defendants impulse training classes, and then the misdemeanor would fall off their record. The okay, same exact facts, huh, Chili? And Thurman, release me from this jail at once, please. Again, there's no rule of law that allows that. Why would the judge show obvious bias and give me such an unfair and harsh sentence? Now, I agree. I thought the sentence was harsh. It was more than I was expecting. And I warned everybody months ago that he could be convicted and then probably convicted on both counts and they would string them together. I didn't think six months. I did not expect that. Uh, maybe the judge got a little irritated with him when he was giving her the thumbs up about how she, you know, he hates all cops. What can you do about it? First, because Zimmerman is not her maiden name. This is really out of bounds now. This, to me, gets to the line of doxing. You don't need to go into her personal life at all. In fact, I think you've really crossed the line here. Zimmerman is the name of the Las Vegas Metro Police Lieutenant she married over two decades ago. Even after he divorced her, she kept the last name, meaning Judge Zimmerman loves cops, and I do not. She Chili, Chili, you are a total freaking moron when it comes to uh, women keeping their uh, married name after getting divorced. There's a whole host of reasons that she could have kept her uh, married name after they got divorced. So you might want to rethink that particular argument right there, dude, because it is irrelevant to her opinion on cops. Well, uh, whose fault is that one? You never disqualified this judge. You allowed this judge to hear all of your pretrial motions. You allowed this judge to be the judge of your case. Now you're complaining that she's biased? Second, what can you do about it? You can petition her and petition the court to release me now. I know for a fact that thousands of you, good and patriotic Americans, have called, emailed, and sent your petition to the court in the form of a letter asking... Okay, now the mail service is involved, and you might think if, as a supporter, you're doing something wonderful by voicing your support for him. But let's say they get 25,000 letters. That is going to be an immense burden on the court, opening it, reading it, scanning it, dealing with it. And then they may just think that you're harassing her because you don't like the decision. And suddenly these other statutes come to life.
you know, there's ways to deal with this without making yourself susceptible to additional criminal charges. Like, how about contempt of court? That's another strike against you, Tilly, because they could use that against you should the issue arise. And if what everybody's hearing is true, they are having issues with the mail over there as well as call flooding. So, Tilly, uh, quit screwing yourself over. You're going to end up, well, getting in even deeper crap than you're already in now. And demanding that I am released from this dungeon. Thank you. See, the reason that he can't do this is there's no law that provides for this. So now this sounds the opposite of him trying to uphold the law. This sounds like anarchy. But we have not done enough. We, you and me, have a First Amendment right to petition our government. Yes. And its officials when they have lost their virtue and broken their principles. Yeah, that's actually true. There is a, a, a procedure for that, for example. And also recall people. You can also vote them out of office. In California here, we voted out three Supreme Court justices because they would never uphold the death penalty. Under any circumstances, they found reasons not to. The people spoke. That is petitioning. This is not petitioning. Yeah, somewhere uh, in all this, the meaning of petitioning your government got lost in the fray with these frauditors because they think uh, holding the government accountable means going to lower-level employees who have nothing to do with what's going on and, and harassing them is holding the government accountable. No, that's not holding the government accountable. That's just you being a total moron. If you want to hold the government accountable, vote people out of office, you dickheads. We have not petitioned them enough. It is our only recourse to redress a clear and biased judge who's gone out. The only, notice the word only, that means there's no other ways to do this. That's flat out wrong. He's wrong a non-violent journalist. Zimmerman has behaved like a monarch or a queen in a despotic government. Not true. Uh, she's actually carrying out the will of the people of the state of Nevada as set forth by the legislature. Changed to this by changing the laws, then, they'll, then the judges have to uphold the law as changed because the trial court has to follow existing law. You get a chance at the appellate court, they can interpret it, but it's not Judge Zimmerman. She doesn't do that. Like a rogue judge in an government. We have a republic government that is supposed to be navigated by... Actually, you said that wrong. It's a re I hear people say this is a democracy. No, it is not. It's a constitutional republic. Learn the difference. By objective law, not by personal bias, by a judge who was the wife of a cop. Instead of acting as a custodian of justice, she has behaved like an obvious tyrant. Okay, uh, now we're getting into contempt of court. And uh, this is bad. You get more time. Petition her. Petition her and demand that she release me from this dungeon immediately, swiftly, and please. Petition the court in the tens of thousands because it is the only recourse that we, the people, have. Judge Zimmerman. In the tens of thousands, there's a right way of doing things and a wrong way. This is the wrong way. You're crossing into contempt, harassment, and possibly criminal charges. And another word uh, for the followers, it's called aiding and abetting. That person was just as liable. It doesn't sound like an innocent thing here that he's asking. He's asking all of you almost as a mob to just descend on the courthouse. The only way you will be able to restore the word honor to your name is by releasing me now. Uh, that is, in my book, contempt of court. Uh, it has nothing to do with her honor. Uh, like I said, she's already lost jurisdiction to hear this case. It's already in front of Judge Levitt now. I have lost okay. integrity. I do not believe. Lost integrity, that gets into contempt. You could say things like the, the court got it wrong, but you can't say they lost their integrity. You have the right to search me illegally. I believe that you... No, that just shows a fundamental... Yeah, Tilly, uh, you seem to have a real misunderstanding of how the courts work to begin with. I mean, there are signs outside that say that you are subject to be searched upon entering a courthouse. And uh, same thing when you're entering a courtroom, dude. And the judge has sway over that entire courthouse as far as the uh, policies and rules go, you moron. 
I mean, that's the way it's been for, well, centuries because of security issues stemming from morons like you who think that the justice system is unfair to them because they got convicted and they want to take it out on the judge or anybody else in the area. I mean, it's that simple, dude. You violated my constitutional rights, as did the bailiff under your directives. When he... Oh, so anyway, when you walk into a courtroom, there's signs up in front of the building that say you consent to search. You've consented to search. And then when you're in a courtroom, the judge has all kinds of power to implement order control and safety and security. And she knew that you recorded, you've admitted to recording during, uh, you know, court sessions. And she had that rule for everyone. Surrender your phones to the marshal and you can watch. Otherwise, you got to go. That's not an illegal search and seizure at all. Show me the case law on that one. You can't. Boom. Roasted. Perhaps it's because you, Judge Zimmerman, need impulse training classes. Okay, we're getting back into contempt again. This is not an apology. I said I'm sorry for hurling slurs in court and calling the bailiff a pig, even if he was behaving like one. The courtroom is supposed to be a place where the insult ceases. Where the insult ceases and calling a, a cop a pig, that's not an insult? It, it looks to me like he's reading something. In other words, he's had time to think about it, which is even worse. Petition her and petition this court. Send in your petition via U.S. Postal Service. Bringing in the U.S. mail is usually a bad idea. By the way, the U.S. mail has the first and original uh, law enforcement agency, the U.S. Postal Inspection Service. And... They are really good at convicting people who mess with the U.S. laws regarding the mail. That Postal Inspection Service, Benjamin Franklin made them the very first federal police force to protect the mail. You bring this in, if it contains a threat, if it's adjudicated to be a threat, if it's deemed to be harassment, who knows? You might be facing separate federal charges again for something else. Did your parents have any children that live? Sir, yes, sir. I bet they regret that. Do not be rude, crass, or threatening. Hold on to your virtue and your self-respect that Judge Zimmerman lost when she put a nonviolent journalist, a champion of our civil liberties, in jail. But I do not wish Judge Zimmerman fear or harm. No. I do not wish it. Okay, so here's the... Oh, hey, don't blame me. You know, I only shot my gun into a train that was going by. I didn't mean to kill anybody. I didn't mean to hit anybody. But hey, you know, if it happens, it wasn't my fault. You're igniting the, the match, Chili. And from what I've been told, lots of mail have already hit the courthouse. And call flooding is going down. This is not legitimate activity. This is pure born harassment. And there's going to be a lot of people who think that maybe they're anonymous behind their keyboard and think it's funny. You wouldn't believe how simple it is to unmask people. I've unmasked many and dragged them kicking and screaming into a courtroom. No, I do not. I want her to live every breath of her life where she sees the public has turned against her. Oh, so that's not uh, trying to instill fear into somebody? That's not threatening somebody? That's not affecting their mental health and safety? I'm saying right now that to me is a clear threat. You just, you, you just signed your name to it. I want her to witness the side-eye sneer in every grocery store clerk and every yeah, that's uh, that. That to me is not only contempt of court. That's uh, stalking now. Every market and every it's not my decision. I'm just offering my opinion, which has been right about just about everything involving Chili De Castro. Every chance encounter, whether it be the dog groomer or the car wash, she will be the face of injustice, the living embodiment of tyranny. Uh -huh. Judge Zimmerman at sentencing said to me that I hate cops. I thought it was my right to hate cops if I want to. It is your right to hate cops. It's the way you go about it that's the problem. If this is true or not, she said it and then jailed you, the cop. I love the uh, music in the background. That's supposed to move me. It does. It's more like a bowel movement. Boom. Roasted. You can make that argument, uh, but I would just say that she had a law in front of her, two of them, that allowed her to jail you, and then you broke the law, got busted for it, and she gave you the mid-range sentences, so she could have given you double the time. Judge Zimmerman, how many hours of my video did you watch before you met me in court? How I would say she definitely watched your videos because of the, the what she said when she sentenced you and what she said before court started. But then again, you put those videos out for people to watch. I warned people when I talked about the federal cyber stalking statute 
that one thing that prosecutors are going to do is they're going to look at your videos to show pattern and knowledge and conduct and everything else. And that's kind of what she said when she says about your behavior. That's pattern. OK, I, I warned about all of this. But you my appeal bond hearing, Judge Zimmerman said that my attitude has not changed. I think she's right. I say now petition her, petition the court, release me now. 100,000 petitions, send uh, in your patriotic, respectful, detailed petition to Judge Ann Zimmerman. On the fold where you seal the envelope, write the words, release to Castro in the name of justice. 100,000 petitions is our goal. Judge Zimmerman, the only way to restore any honor to your name is to release me now with time served. It's a fact that I will sue you. If you do not have me killed in here, then when Okay, so we're going off the deep end again. Uh, you can sue her all you want, just you can, like you can sue the prosecutors that you threaten. They all have full immunity while they're working in their job. So that will be probably anti slapped So, Chili, essentially your threats of lawsuits against this judge are totally meaningless. Wow. How does it feel to be, well, a complete and total moron for not even knowing that little fact right there, uh, my uh, man, because, well, I'm sure uh, once you find that out, uh, you'll be, well, making up some excuse like, uh, oh, they changed the rules. They did this. They did that. No, dude, uh, you just didn't know the rules to begin with. I leave this jail. I will, in fact, sue you. I do not deserve to be here. However, I will not do anything illegal, and I'm not asking. Yeah, you just said that, but that's, in my opinion, not what you're doing. And lawless. Be beyond reproach in your petition. Write nicely and print it out. Explain clear this cop loving Judge Bias and her indefensible sentencing. We'll post both in the Las Vegas Review and the Sun when all the data scraping is complete. Great. Now you've guaranteed to make this a public issue, which means that anybody you sue because you claim to fame them will be able to anti slap your ass immediately. She broke her principles and she lost her virtue. Write it out. Write it nicely. Write it clear, write it clean. Just write it, put it in the mail, and send it. So he wants you to write the words it. So just put the word it. He said write it. Write it. I say to you this. I've been quiet, respectful, and shown deference. I don't really believe any of that. Upon leaving this jail, should I live through this, I will file a petition against the Clark County Detention Center for clearly cheating me and violating my civil rights. Nowhere in the Clark County Detention Center handbook does it read the words, no live streaming. Once again. Well, if there isn't a rule against it now, you've just proven why there needs to be one. I agree completely that our civil liberties and our rights are completely under attack all the time now, and we, we must be vigilant. But I don't do it this way. Yeah, I agree. This isn't violence. Uh, no one said it is, but that doesn't change the fact that it looks to me to be outright harassment. To my loyal people and supporters, you should hear from me always within 48 hours. Always. Unless you do not hear from me, let the jailers be. Outside of the... Let the jailers be. Doesn't that sound like more harassment to them? Unlawful have searched me and demoralized me by looking at my backside. Outside of that, each individual guard has treated me fairly and within their policies. Then why are you suing them? I would like to thank them for doing that. I'd like my people to focus on petitioning the court for my release. We have another judge, Judge Michelle Levitt, who will be hearing my case on July 10th. Judges must be treated with respect and deference. The judges yeah. must be petitioned and told that this is wrong. I should be released immediately the time served. So basically, uh, Chili, here's what we can get out of this whole thing right here. Uh, you have opened your mouth way too many times. You have uh, made clear threats against the judge, uh, which apparently can be proven uh, in a court of law, and they're might be an indictment in your future should you continue this. So it's up to you whether or not you want to take this to the next level. And if uh, they find that enough against you, hell, it might be more than five years before you even see the light of day again, you moron. I mean, your mouth is getting you into so much trouble at this point, dude. I mean, it, at the age of 50, it finally hit critical mass. And, uh, well, 
There's no turning back now because the chain reaction has already started and uh, that nuke will be going off and uh, you're the only one at ground zero or anywhere in the destructive range of that particular nuclear device, dude. And so, yeah, and it's your own damn fault. So congratulations, Chili. You probably just uh, won yourself, uh, well, some real serious prison time should they push the issue. Congratulations, Chili. You are a total moron. So, at any rate, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?